welcome to the Canada Bay Podcast, the first ever podcast designed to showcase Canadian thought leadership. These innovators share industry insights, entrepreneurial best practices, lessons learned, and other tips that we can incorporate right into our lives, our careers, and our businesses. So let's get inspired. Hey, innovators, I got a really amazing guest today. We've got Ross Andrew Paquette, who is the founder and CEO of Maripost, which is North America's fastest growing marketing automation company. In fact, it was actually ranked by the Deloitte Technology Fast 500. It's pretty impressive. After he founded Maripost in 2011, he's actually gone on to double annual growth ever, every year since. So he's actually turned a one-man operation into an international business. There's a lot I think we're going to be able to learn from him. So welcome, Ross. I am really excited to chat with you today. Yeah, hey, Simon. Same, same to you. So how did you come up with this idea of Maripost? Yeah, so I actually have um, a bit of a unique background in that I, I didn't come from, you know, the, the, the tech space necessarily in that, uh, you know, my goal was never to, to land into the space. I, I started off as a, a sales rep um, somewhat randomly through some, some family connections. I'm actually from Timmins, Ontario, uh, which is about eight hours north of, of Toronto. It's a very small uh, city. But um, I, I was living in Ottawa, Canada at the time. Um, I was actually just about to sort of venture off into the, the travel community. So I was going to travel around the world and um, got an opportunity to go work at a, a small tech uh, startup and very quickly that that um, transitioned after about two months to uh, a company that was in the email marketing space and um, when I went there as a uh, excuse me <clears throat> when I went there as a junior sales rep um, I very quickly went from being a, an inside sales rep to the director of sales within about a year uh, and then about uh, you know two years into that that sort of segue um, I was working at a company and and I really thought that the you know, the, the industry was, was underserved from a support perspective and, and that, you know, I could maybe carve out kind of a lifestyle business from it. So, um, you know, I thought, you know, I'd have 10 customers. I was living at a, at a condo that had a pool on the roof. So, you know, I'd sit by the pool all day and, and really just support individuals from that perspective. And so from the, you know, the outset, I've always focused heavily on that kind of support and the, and the product side of things. So, of course, you know, we, we supported our customers. We kept innovating the product. And, you know, within about two years, uh, we started to, you know, kind of see some, some major expansion. We went from, you know, about 300,000 revenue to, uh, in revenue started at 3.3 million in, in one year, uh, to 13.3 million and, and then kept growing from there. So the, the goal, you know, really never changed. And, and, you know, when you think about what, what made, you know, the, the process so exciting, it was, it was really the passion I had, not for necessarily just the growth side of things, but for how, uh, we were going to help our customers again, you know, move their businesses forward. E email, uh, you know, marketing automation and such is very much tied to revenue. Uh, so that's, you know, what was very exciting about those initial stages and, and sort of how I, uh, I started the company. No, that's amazing. That's, I love your background, like a sales guy that, you know, really knew, understood yeah. customers and understood what they needed and really understood the story that they need to be able to make things happen. So that's yeah. brilliant beyond belief. So out of curiosity for our listeners out there, what exactly is Maripost? Yeah, so we actually, um, as I mentioned, we started off in the email marketing space. So our customers, um, you know, come to us no di different than a, a, a MailChimp or a Constant Contact, which are more self-service, uh, you know, low-cost products. We're, we're more in the, the mid-market to enterprise space now. Um, but you're sending out, you know, campaigns to your customers to solicit them to either uh, purchase products or, or communicate with them, you know, whether it's newsletters, you know, product recommendations and so on. Um, so we're, we're the ones delivering that from a, a software perspective. Um, our customers, of course, log into our platform and they utilize it for that. Now we, we've since, you know, evolved uh, significantly, you know, where we have, we actually have two different platforms now. Um, so the, the first one being, you know, email marketing, pushing in app messaging, social media management, marketing automation being a backbone of that. We have uh, artificial intelligence built into it so we can produce, you know, again, as I said, product recommendations or personalized content for, uh, you know, our, our customers' customers or our customers' subscribers. Um, and so our second product that actually uh, just launched this year is actually in the CRM uh, e-commerce uh, and service and support arena. So uh, both platforms speak seamlessly to one another. Uh, but the new one, again, is more in line with kind of where, uh, Salesforce goes with a CRM or where a, uh, you know, again, we're, we're a Canadian podcast here, uh, where Shopify goes. But again, focus more on that mid-market to, to enterprise group. Um, 
so really exciting from that perspective in that we're, we're helping, you know, our, of course, our clients or, or we're helping them, you know, from a number of perspectives, of course, generate more revenue being the, the key area, but also be more efficient in that they can have less platforms, less partners, or, and, you know, effectively less relationships as well. Uh, we're removing the concept of having, you know, 10, 20, or even in some cases, 50 different platforms, uh, you know, within a marketing kind of, um, you know, business group on at any organization, whether small or large for that matter. No, that's amazing because, you know, like I think a lot of small businesses, everyone knows about MailChimp and all those things and they hear about Salesforce yep. all the time, you know, but you're actually incorporating both pieces. So it's actually quite seamless. Right. So they actually see yeah, the end exactly. to end. So they can actually see the sales lead, like the marketing lead that they're sending out there, what's working, what's not to actually being able to close the actual sale. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I- and, and companies like Salesforce are amazing. Sorry, just to add one point they're, you know, they're, they're of course massive, but um, they're getting, you know, to their, their end goal by acquisition, whereas we develop all of our own products from scratch. And in the end, you know, our, my belief is that, or, or my view is that that's going to create a, a much stronger ecosystem than one, you know, that anyone could, you know, could effectively create by buying their way to that. No, I think that's amazing. So out of curiosity, what makes this a little bit more different than, you know, all having all these different pieces and components as opposed to just having one seamless type of yeah. solution? So you said, it, you said it best. So seamless would be the answer to that. Ah. I mean, whenever, you know, an organization has, is building in, you know, a new piece of technology they've acquired, so let's say I've got a, a marketing automation platform, I want to connect that to, to my CRM solution or to my commerce platform, a lot of the times that requires, you know, integration and, and integration can be simple in some cases if, if the org, you know, if the companies both have something out of the box, 90% of the time they don't though. So now I've got to uh, hire a developer or I've got to have, of course, development resources on staff. They've got to put that into their development queue. I've now got to get that done. How long is that going to keep is going to be required there to, you know, transfer, you know, Ross's profile from our CRM platform over to our marketing automation platform or from our marketing automation platform over to the commerce solution so we can remarket to them or we can sell them additional products or services or what have you. Um, that process these days, and when you think about the amount of solutions any organization uses, uh, it, you know, is a huge cost from a, more from a time perspective. Uh, and then again, the, the resources that you have to have in place to, you know, to make that happen. And so I think that, well, you know, 15 years ago, this was, that was actually kind of the model, you know, over the last 15 years and think kind of like, well, let's move over to best of breed. You know, we'll buy the best uh, email solution here, the best CRM solution here, the best commerce solution here, the best customer acquisition solution over here. Um, you know, cobbling those together has sort of moved, you know, there's not sort of has moved individuals back into the direction of, okay, we want to cut down on, on the relationships we have. We want to cut down on the products we want, we want to have. And we just want, you know, again, a, a seamless process or seamless, um, you know, integrated solution that, that gives us the, the data and the understanding that we want. This is really cool. So do you find that everybody has some sort of these types of solutions or is there something that's really for important sure. for small or medium sized businesses to think about? So there are, I mean, two of the, again, the, of the products or the, ver, you know, of the verticals that we serve as being email marketing and CRM, those are, those are the backbone of any company. I mean, if I were starting a new business tomorrow, the two products I would probably have to buy or the first product would be a, a CRM or let's say e-commerce solution if I'm, if I'm, of course, you know, selling physical products, um, you know, and, and an email marketing platform because email remains the, the strongest form of marketing or most cost-effective form of marketing. Um, so you, you know, you can buy either of those products for, you know, or, or combine, you know, for like $50 a month. So, you know, I still <laughs> run into customers or, or prospective customers where they're, they're running, you know, certain areas on Excel. And it's like you could spend $50 a month and, and have one of these tools. So really anyone needs those, right? Obviously, you may not need a Meripost level version of that product, but uh, you certainly need a version of it nonetheless. Yeah, I know it's crazy because I've seen a lot of clients that actually are still doing things via Excel or better yet, they actually are so inconsistent in when they're sending certain things and they forget because they think they can individually yep. do it because they're not actually tracking it in Excel. They're like, oh, just based on, you know, and it's it's amazing that this is still happening out there with all these different types of automation tools that are kind of bite-sized exactly. fits all, right? So. Yeah. Yes. And and or, honestly, so maybe we could talk about maybe some of the other types of benefits that to having this, not just automation, but the view that you get from a customer perspective of what you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our main focus actually um, now, is, or, or not now, but this year is, is the, you know, 
is a single customer view, right? And, and if, you know, I wouldn't say everyone is talking about that, but a lot of people are talking about that. And the unfortunate side of that thing is while everybody talks about the single customer view, there, there isn't really another platform out there that gives you that. So when you think about a single customer view, it's, you know, um, you know, my name is Ross, you know, I've, I've purchased products for your company. Maybe your company also sells products directly, right? Where a sales rep is involved. And then there's the communication that's occurred with me, the emails I've received. Did I download your app? Am I following you on your, your Facebook account uh, or Instagram or so on and so forth? A- aggregating all of that information together is something that no one else really does. A lot of people say they do it, but they don't. Uh, and the reason that they don't do it, again, is because you're bringing all that information in from a, a number of different sources. Um, and while there's, you know, there's dashboard tools out there like a Domo or a Tableau or, or even Clipfolio, uh, a little bit more on the SMB side that, that um, you know, that do that from a, a data perspective, well, that's great. But what can I do with that information? It's great that you're telling me that these, this group of customers is, uh, you know, falls within, in, within one of my core personas. Uh, but what am I going to do with that? How am I going to action that? And that's where we come into play. We also, we tell you uh, who your, you know, your top customer groups are or who, what, what a single customer may look like. And give you the the, the um, you know the tools to action on that, right? How do we best market to Ross? How do we best sell Ross? How do we best manage Ross from a customer service perspective? How do we ensure he's happy? Is probably the best way of looking at it, from an experience perspective, and of course, uh, a, a post purchase or post sign up perspective. So you see the whole gamut from pre to actually delivery to post. Correct. The yeah. entire customer life cycle. You you see it all. That is actually amazing. Exactly. So yeah. being and everybody's been talking about customer life cycle for a while now. So that's the funny part of it. Yeah. Um, there's different customer life cycles. Now it's really how do you encompass the entire customer life cycle? Is there diff- different ki- customer life cycles? Yeah, I mean, people, yeah, of course. There's, there's the marketing side of things, right? The customer acquisition component. So our, uh-huh. the life from, uh, from marketing or, you know, from initial marketing to, to acquisition. So now we have Roth. Now what do we do with him, right? So then, then there's the life cycle around the purchase process, right? So now that we've, we've brought him in, he, he's looking at our products or he's viewing our products or he's thinking about buying our products. How do we convert him to a paying customer? Now what he's purchased from us, then there's the, the life cycle from the perspective of, okay, well, what's the experience he's going to receive after the fact? And, and all, I mean, of course, all of those are encompassed by the single customer life cycle, but th- from a product perspective until, you know, today, those were all fragmented. And that's the perfect reason actually to, you know, or, or example of why, you know, we're so unique and we've become so unique in the market today because we brought them all together. So. Uh, I love it. I love it. This is really fascinating. So being yeah. that you are kind of like you were a one man show that actually because when I was actually prepping for the interview, I was reading about that you went from $25 million in annual revenues in your first four years and then you didn't really have a marketing strategy yourself, but you were able to grow it so fast. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Five years, actually, I'd say. Oh, five Probably little, years. More, even more accurate, yeah. Yeah. So that's crazy. So how uh, did you... I mean, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, you know, for the first five years, that, that was actually... And it's something I would do differently. We can talk about that a little bit later, but the, you know, the view at the time was like, I was the, the sales rep, I was the support rep, I was the client success rep, I was the finance individual. And so the list kind of goes on. Um, you know, now obviously we have a much different structure uh, because the belief was that that could work. I mean, when I look back, I'm like, I must have been crazy to think that that was going to scale forever. But at the time I did. Um, so it's been a unique journey from that perspective. Well, since we're on this topic, like, so can you tell us about maybe something that you kind of wish that you had done differently from that perspective or, you know, because I mean, you still made amazing sales. It's just brilliant beyond belief. Like, you know, you're like, wow, talk about amazing instinct and understanding your customer. I mean, it was really exciting. So I can't say that there's that I really wish I had done things differently. I mean, now that I look back, you know, the one thing I, I... would would have done differently is I would have brought in, you know, other individuals who could have grown with the business, not necessarily that we would have grown any faster or been any more successful during that time period. Um, but they would have understood, you know, kind of the, the, again, the, the, the starting points of, of what that took, right. I would have maybe had a, a chief operating officer or a chief financial officer, which of course we have now, or have had for the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, I think that would have, allow you know giving me the freedom to, to even grow the business faster even while I was on my own because they would have handled maybe some of the you know the process oriented avenues um you know finance hr 
you know, operations, client support and such, you know, probably could have pulled off and pulled off a little bit sooner. Uh, maybe even marketing actually would have been a good example, but that sort of sales and customer service perspective, you know, if that had remained under me, uh, you know, I think we would have had, this, you know, we of course would have had the same outcome, just maybe a little bit easier. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I think it's yeah. amazing because that means you got to test things early yeah. and tweak things yeah. and, and your hands are right in because you were so passionate about it, right? You wanted your hands in all the pot. Sure. That's how I interpreted your story that, you know. It absolutely is. Yeah, I would, yeah. Uh, I'm the same kind of uh, junkie that way too, that I would just be all over the place because I just would be so excited about everything and making magic happen for, and you know, and you're a relationship guy. So you want to make the best value yep. for your customer. Absolutely. That's how I interpret it all. So, yeah. So tell me something else. What excites you most about this whole, you know, email, CRM, marketing type of industry? Because it's changing so fast. Yeah. I mean, I, what, one of the things that excites me the most is, is as we, you know, going back to the discussion around single customer view, it's really not about the single customer view for, for again, the marketing and sales process necessary. What it's really about is defining who your core, you know, personas or, or customer groups or, or, you know, lead groups, um, you know, that, that you're going to be marketing and selling your products to. And, and so, uh, you know, of course, there's a lot of discussion around, you know, AI, machine learning. Um, I'm always hesitant to use AI because I think it gets thrown around too loosely these days. But, you know, how that's going to play a role in, in again, defining those groups, that's really the next stage. So while, you know, while Maripost is here and we're showing you, hey, this is who Ross is, this is who Sapna is, this is who Adam is and, and Jennifer and so on and so forth, you know, it's, what it's really going to be, or sorry, what's really going to be powerful over the next stages is saying, okay, well, you thought that these five groups were your best customers, right, based on the data that you're looking at. Um, but, you know, your, your AI or your machine learning engine can actually, can of course, analyze things in a much, you know, more robust manner than a, than a person can. And it's going to tell you, you know, you thought it was these five, but it turns out it's these five. And this is how you should be marketing to those people. And this is the messaging that you should be using to market to them. Um, that's what I'm really excited about in terms of the next stage of sort of that, you know, evolution of, of again, CRM and commerce and, and marketing automation. Um, and, you know, the, the faster that we can, can get there, because there is a bit of a slowdown as well from a technology perspective. There's a lot of companies out there that are, are launching, but they're launching more as a feature. There's not a ton of innovation where somebody's saying, like, we've got this platform. This is going to revolutionize how you do business, right? Maybe, maybe not. It's not going to change how you do business today, but it's going to revolutionize it in, in that it's going to make you significantly more efficient. It's going to automate a lot of what you're doing manually today. It's going to make things a lot easier for your teams to understand you know, what's taking place in the market as well, like from a, a customer journey perspective, as, as we sort of mentioned. Um, so that's something I'm really excited and, and definitely really passionate about. And of course, you know, I, I like to think we're, we're lucky because I'm also in that space. And, mm. and you know, that's never going to go away. It's, it's the framework, as I mentioned earlier, and the backbone of, of a business. You can't store your customer data. If you can't organize your customer data, if you can't understand your customer data, well, you, you don't really have much of a scaling or growing business, do you? No. Um, and no, it makes sense. Um, and, and you can't really understand yeah. your customer either if you don't understand who those personas exactly. are. So it's kind of really neat that you actually kind of say, hey, you know what? You've, I know you've identified these ones, but did you notice that you've got this cluster forming that's like this? Yeah. So that's really giving yeah. really good consulting advice because you only know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. And you kind of provide that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the blind spot of going, hey, do you see this happening here? Well, that's the application that's going to tell them that. That's the application or effectively our AI engine, which is called DaVinci, doing its job and telling them what what these customers are or who these customer groups are based on the data, right? As opposed to us and what we're seeing or the customer and what they're seeing or their marketing individuals and what they're seeing or their sales reps and what they're seeing. Uh, because, of course, we have our own intuition, our own views and, and our own understanding of the data. But, you know, there's so much now. There's so many points, right, that you can connect to to tell you what that is. So the faster, again, an application can do it, uh, of course, the better off or the more quickly you can action on those items. I love it. Okay, so did I just hear you correctly? Yeah. Did you call your AI tool DaVinci? I did, yeah. <laughs> is that what it's called, DaVinci? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. And that makes, is. yeah, yeah. Like, that is kind of mastery we work. We, yeah, we haven't pushed it a ton from, from a brand perspective, but that is what we we're calling it. And, and over the next, you know, kind of 6, 12 months, you'll, you'll certainly see it a lot more. Oh, I love it. I love it. It just makes me think yeah. of masterpieces and artwork and yeah. also the Da Vinci Code. You know, that was a puzzle and a yeah. half. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, this is all the pieces coming together. 
so Ross, honestly, you've just got such a fascinating background. Like, I honestly, I think I can listen to you speak for hours because you really understand things, you know, from a customer perspective, marketing and, and sales for sure perspective, like double digit growth. I don't know how you managed to pull it off so quickly. It's just, you know, remarkable beyond belief. So I was thinking, would you be able to provide some advice to our aspiring or budding innovators out there? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the, uh, to go back to some of the, the previous pieces around, you know, companies out there becoming, you know, or, or starting up based on more of a feature than an actual organization is that, you know, I, I really want to look back, you know, and, and be able to provide a story where, you know, individuals were, were pushing the limit a little bit more, right? I, I, it's, it's obviously very easy these days to raise capital and, uh, you know, and there's a lot of capital flying around there. You, you can, you can, you know, pretty much raise it in, in you know, for any idea, uh, which is what it seems, but, you know, pushing the limit in terms of, of what your, you know, of what your idea is or, or what your concept is in that, you know, think of something that is going to allow companies or individuals to benefit from, you know, forever, right? Like building, building an organization as opposed to just building a company that you want to sell. I think, you know, I want to see more individuals out there looking to, to build something that's, that's at, at the scale of, of a sales force and an IBM. And maybe they don't get there, but maybe they build something really exciting from that. And that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And we did that without ever raising any capital, right? So, also, you know, going back to one of the points you made, I had to know how to manage HR, you know, and, and finance and, and all the systems that, that related to that. Of course, sales and marketing, which we did, we're going to talk more about. But that's, you know, that's doing th- something different, right? You don't need to have somebody give you $5 million to, to start up your idea because what you're going to lose there is that you're going to go out and you're going to hire a VP of sales and a VP of marketing, a VP of HR, and a VP of finance, and so on and so forth. You know, doing it yourself, uh, you know, gives you a much you know, kind of stronger connection, both to the business, to your customers, a, a stronger appreciation for the, the success that, you, you know, you're hopefully going to see. Um, and again, as that goes back to what I said before, which is have an idea that, that's, that's bigger than just, oh, okay, I want to get bought by SAP or Salesforce or IBM or whatever other company out there that happens to be in your vertical. Um, you know, think further, think, think, you know, farther, I guess you could say, would be the best way to look at it. And that's the best advice I can, I can give because that's really what I'm doing and that's what I want to do and that's what I'm going to continue to do. I always find that's amazing. Like, you know, so you're saying have that big, big vision and, and really be yeah. able to see it. Don't be scared Think of bigger. it. Think bigger. There's actually a book, I think, called Think Bigger. Is yeah. that, <laughs> is that, that's yeah. awesome. But yeah. I haven't read it, but... Yeah, no, it's but either. it's amazing because I think we do kind of limit our own beliefs about how big are we really going to be able to get and because we're trying not to compare ourselves to the big dogs and it gets a little overwhelming. But, you know, but to your point, if you think bigger, then it is more achievable because you're actually aspiring to that level of greatness. I yeah, love absolutely. it. So yeah. now, being that you are kind of like this sales and marketing guru, do you have a really cool sales and marketing tip you could share with us? Yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> just coming from the guy selling the stick, he's going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, and it's beneficial in all these conversations because it's the space that we happen to be in. I mean, again, putting the right systems in place is, is critical. Um, it doesn't matter if you're, you're using Maripost or using other companies. Having that process down, making sure it's efficient, making sure it's easy to understand, making sure you can understand the data. You know, a lot of, again, going back to something I said earlier, you know, you, you can, you can buy a dashboard program. You can connect all of your other platforms to the dashboard. You can get this nice little preview. You know, the easier it is to put that together and to have, you know, it be actionable information. Doesn't matter what company you're, or what vertical you're in, you know, what type of company you're, you're running or you're growing or you're building. Um, Making sure that process is efficient is, is, is just critical, right? I, I can say this from internal. It took us it took us two years to to put that together, right? And and of course now we use our own technology to do it. But when we were doing it, we didn't have that. So, you know, it took us that long to put it together. And if I could have done that in, in a month, or if I could have purchased, you know, solutions X, Y, and Z to do that in in a matter of days, which is something you can do now, um, I, I would have gone back and and certainly done that because I would have been able to, to look at those. Those, those dashboards or those views or those, those customer types or those, the single customer view and really understand, okay, how do I, what decisions do I need to make next? What decisions are going to impact my customers? What decisions are going to impact my business? What decisions are going to impact my, um, you know, my, my team here as well at Maripost? Oh, I love it. Honestly, you're just uh, seriously really fascinating and I love your wealth of experience. So Ross, out of curiosity, do you have a favorite quote that just really resonates with you and has become sort of your anthem? Yeah, I absolutely do. Um, so it's a Steve Jobs quote, which I'm sure a lot of people uh, pick on or, or choose, but it's, uh, you know, let's go invent today rather than worry about what happened yesterday. 
And the reason why, you know, I love that so much is, of course, it, it relates to, you know, innovation and, and focusing on moving forward. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it always reminds me to forget about what happened yesterday. You know, we're always going to get into situations that are, that are, you know, negative, whether, you know, it be with customers or employees or, or growth or, or struggles around, you know, finance. Um, but, you know, never worrying about what happened in the past. It's the past. You know, always moving forward is definitely a core to my, you know, to my, my personal beliefs and, of course, to my, my personal growth. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. And do you have a book or an audio book that's kind of really resonated with you? <laughs> yeah, so I always like to mention this. I, I'm not a reader. Uh, sadly, I wish I was. Um, something I, I definitely have to spend more time on. Um, but of the very few books that I have listened to, um, one is called Rocket Fuel. And, and that actually, I didn't even finish it, so that's kind of sad. But um, the, the core uh, background of, of that uh, book, you know, audio book, is is adapting your business, you know, at a certain size to focus on the, the visionary and what they call integrator role. Um, and the, the moment I, I listened to that or, or the portion of the book that I listened to, I actually sent that off to my, my team, my, my CFO, my, my VP of marketing, uh, sorry, of, uh, of product, uh, my, my chief technology officer. And I said, you know, just, just listen to this. Listen to the first 20 minutes and, and let me know what you get out of it. And it really it shifted our you know our, our organizational structure overnight. Um, my CFO at the time moved into a, a CEO role, uh, and he would, became that that integrator. And and I really embraced um, you know the version of my role that I that I you know was meant to have, which is driving our, our product and our innovation forward and our message forward and our our strategy forward, as opposed to being in the you know kind of the weeds of the business. Right. I still love talking to our customers and all that. But I'm not involved with, you know, this like a, a one small issue that happened to come up last Wednesday, as an example, or uh, somebody in a in a specific uh, part of the sales process. So really embracing that and, and really actually, you know, kind of digging into the, the details of how you get to that point uh, were extremely beneficial, both for my, myself, again, personally, and for the business as a whole. That's amazing. I really like how this kind of really did really actually to the titles, you know, Rocket Fuel, that 20 minute segment that you it actually overnight changed your business. I mean, that is rocket yeah. fuel right there, right? In the yeah, naked. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, yeah. how can our listeners connect with you? Uh, sorry, uh, so connect from a personal perspective or, or a business perspective uh, or both? Or both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, certainly, um, you know, from a personal perspective, I, I actually document a lot of my, um, you know, day-to-day -day life on, on Instagram. Uh, I'm sure to the detriment and the positive feelings of some. Um, but of course, the organization Maripost or www.maripost.com um, is certainly any way to understand our, our products and our vision and, and where the organization is going. Um, also, one of the things I wanted to mention is that we do have a nonprofit called Maripost Cares. So you can see that at www.maripostcares.org. Uh, if you really want to understand kind of what we stand for and, and what we're focused on, you know, from a, a philanthropic or, or global perspective. Um, and that's something that, again, is certainly very important to um, how any organization, I think, should should expand themselves. It's, you know, growth is amazing, but at some point we've got to do something with it. So I think oh. that's going to be really helpful. I'm already going on to that. And for our listeners out there, I'm going to make sure it's all in our show notes. So you can be able to just to click and you'll be able to connect with Ross pretty easily. And Maripose cares. I love it. Wow, it's amazing. It's about protection and conservation of the global environmental issues. Yeah. This is amazing. Can't do much if we don't have a world. <laughs> I, I love it. I love the passion and the vision. I absolutely do. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for your time. You are so brilliant beyond belief. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, everyone, for joining in and tuning in this week. Next week, you've got another really cool episode. I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek. I'm going to try to do this and see how this works. If you guys are interested, like, like the little sneak teasers, let me know. I'd love to hear back from all of you. And don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a review. And let me know if you know of another Canadian innovator that's doing something really cool around the world. Let's get them showcased. Or if there's an innovation trend that you would like to specifically focus on. Anyways, looking forward to hearing from all of you and talk to you next week. Cheers. Cheers.